So I realized that you can actually get most of every NFL stadium in Minecraft as just like a super big build. And so I decided, hmm, how can I make this into a video? And I'm like, oh yeah, why don't I make a bracket and just raid all of the stadiums? And so that's what we're doing today. So we're starting off with Ford Field of the Lions. I'm not gonna lie, the outside of the stadium is looking about as exciting as the Lions postseason. And you know, the name Ford Field, it actually fits really well considering Henry Ford was probably alive last time the Lions were good but I guess we'll see the inside. Well, the inside is actually looking a lot better than I would have expected looking at the outside. This symmetry is almost as consistent as their losing seasons. I mean, the seating here is just amazing. The view from here is about as good as Dan Orlovsky's in the back of the end zone. And these rafters here, I mean, they're pretty big. I would suggest putting them a little lower just in case Aaron Rodgers comes back here, throw in some more Hail Marys. At least then someone would be able to block his pass. You know, I do like how they made it more realistic by putting all of the Lions fans in here too. Next up, we have the Bears with Soldier Field and I mean it's not bad the only thing is the person who made this actually didn't make a world download so I won't be able to view it in Minecraft which is kind of annoying but oh well I guess we'll look at it and first off I want to say just be aware the videos quality that I'm taking these from is about as good as the Bears draft picks so this is the stadium here this isn't in Minecraft but since I can't really go at, around the stadium like I would be able to normally I'm just gonna use this photo and I'm just gonna ask it now was the play calling for this stadium also made by Matt Nagy who puts a stadium inside of an old stadium like that does not fit in well overall the blue's not bad here but this section here underneath this giant thing i mean i would feel about as safe as if i was the quarterback behind the bears o line like it's just kind of hanging there also i knew that cody parkey's double doink was bad but did you really need to put the field goal in the inside of the end zone after that we have the viking stadium here and there's honestly not too much to say about it it's actually a pretty solid stadium and i think it looks really cool However, I will say it is kind of ironic that they're called the U.S. Bank Stadium, considering even the 0-10-1 Lions were able to crack open their defense, but you tell me. <laughs> and the inside here, compared to the other two stadiums we've already looked at, I would say this is definitely my favorite. Though I do have to say, this gray and purple combo looks about as good as their Super Bowl record, and that's not the best. So, other than that, I'd say it actually does look really cool, though. And finally, we have the ever-so-famous Lambeau Field of the Packers. I've personally been here twice, and it was really fun both times. However, the last game I was to, it didn't end so well. Anyway, so this is Lambeau Field. I will say, these metal seats are only about as comfortable as Packers fans' hopes in the playoffs, and that's not too high. However, Packers is a very fitting name, considering they always seem to pack their bags right around the NFC Championship. This blending job here looks about as good as their special teams, and somehow these seats up here aren't as high as their quarterback's ego. First up, we have the Packers versus the Bears, and the Bears, I don't really like the design of there being a newer stadium in the middle of an older stadium, so the victory will go to the Packers. Next up, we have the Lions versus the Vikings, and I thought both of these stadiums were actually quite nice, however, the outside of the Lions stadium just isn't that great, so victory goes to the Vikings. Up last, this is a really difficult decision for me. I'm tied on both of these, and I'm a Packers fan, so I probably have some biasy towards the Packers, and so that told me just right there, the Vikings one is probably better. So we're starting off with the legendary SoFi Stadium, just been built not too long ago. I feel like this is way too much effort on the design, and it doesn't honestly look that good. It's like some weird bent triangle thing. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be, but I feel like it's a big waste of opportunity. These people literally have been spending more time on their stadium than they do in the end zone. Now, I would complain about them sharing a stadium with the Rams, but I bet it's hard when you're the sole reason that the Browns didn't lose 35 games in a row. And you know, the name Chargers is pretty ironic considering they always seem to die out in the second half. Next up we got the Sports Authority Field at Mile High. It makes sense that the corners aren't here but it's just it's confusing to look at because I'm not used to the stadium going up and down and also I feel like there could be something back here. It's a little bit wasted. It's really no surprise that good quarterbacks want to end their career here and not start it. And I mean the fact that it's at Mile High is kind of ironic considering that's what their offensive coordinator is come game day. This Bronco over here is carrying the stadium more than the defense in Super Bowl 50. And other than that, I mean, it's not a great stadium, I'm not gonna lie. And third on our list, we have Allegiant Stadium, which I believe is the newest stadium in the NFL. Heading into the main stadium, okay, the inner bowl, I'm not gonna lie, is kind of some wasted potential here. The outside was looking insane, and the inside, I mean, it's just kind of dark, I guess. I mean, it's literally, like, darker than their players' crime histories, and there's not much actual design to it. I mean, I guess there's a white stripe, but other than that, it's all just 
gray and black. And as sad as I'd be as a Raiders fan, at least I'd be comfortable while watching them lose. And finally up on our list, we got the ever so awaited Arrowhead Stadium of the Kansas City Chiefs, aka the only team in the AFC West that anyone cares about. And on first glimpse, it's kind of weird. I mean, it's really given me like an out west vibe, which is kind of ironic considering their rival is named after Buffalo Bill. And contrary to popular belief, the Chiefs Stadium is not actually in Kansas. It is in Kansas City in Missouri for some reason, which honestly makes more sense than Kansas considering Missouri aka misery is all that their fans will feel come playoffs. These scoreboard things over here, I mean they really catch my eye less than the Chiefs catch the ball when it matters. Can you imagine trying to look at that scoreboard from here? That scoreboard's tinier than Tyree Kill. This wall here is intercepting my vision more than every other team against Patrick Mahomes at the beginning of the season. Overall, it's not a horrible stadium, but compared to the other stadiums we've seen in this division, it's gonna be tough for this stadium to move on. First up, we got the Raiders versus the Broncos, and the Broncos stadium, obviously the gray and red, even if it's orange and blue, I just, I feel like it's not that great of a stadium. It's not horrible, obviously, but the thing is, they're up against the Raiders here, and the Raiders had an amazing outer bowl, like the outside of it, and I think that the Raiders honestly had a great stadium. So the Raiders are going to move on past the Broncos. Next up, we have the Chiefs versus the Chargers. So the Chiefs obviously have the red stadium. It was kind of an out west look, kind of like a college, which was not bad. The Chargers, obviously, a lot of wasted potential on the outside of their stadium with their weird triangle that I don't really like, but their inner bowl was insane, and so I just got to give it to the Chargers. No matter how many times the Chiefs crush them in the season, they can't crush them with their stadium. Now, for the divisional championship, we have the Raiders versus the Chargers. This is a difficult decision. The Chargers have an outstanding inner bowl, but the Raiders also have an amazing outside. We're just kind of going over the entire look, and I really have to give it to the Raiders. I just think overall they have a better stadium. Although the Chargers have a good inside, like, I feel like the Raiders Stadium just looks better altogether. First up, we have a very unloaded Raymond James Stadium of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And on first glimpse, it's actually not a horrible stadium. I do have to say, though, this part's so bland, it's living bit angry more than Bruce Arians to Antonio Brown. This place is missing more seats than the Buccaneers wins in 1976. And then it looks like we got a little town over here. It sounds smaller than the Buccaneers' success without Tom Brady. And I do like how they kept in some orange as a memorial of their days as the Tampa Bay Creamsicles, too. Overall, not a bad stadium. After that, we've got the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. And I'm not sure if I'm missing a texture pack or something, but this Superdome, honestly, it looks horrible. Looks about as good as all their quarterbacks' health this year. Though I do have to admit, they did fix it up a little bit on the inside here. I'm not sure what's going on in these seats. These look messier than their defense. Might just be the leftover confetti they took home from the Minneapolis Miracle. And these seats down here are kind of golden. I mean, I respect it, but it doesn't really tie in with the gray you've got going here. I'm not really sure. Overall, not the best stadium we've ever seen, especially because this roof. But who knows? Maybe maybe the other stadiums will be bad. Next up, we have the Bank of America Stadium of the Carolina Panthers. And right off the bat, the stadium's literally more open than all the wide receivers Sam Darnold didn't throw to last season. This stadium is so plain, there's like not even much to acknowledge. I mean, I guess there's this line here that's kind of like spottier than their pass defense. And this gray part over here, which is looking uglier than their postseason success rate. I gotta say, this message here, like, keep pounding. More like keep pouncing away from the ball in Super Bowl 50. You could have done so much better. But nevertheless, last up we have Mercedes-Benz Stadium, and we already covered Mercedes-Benz Superdome with the Saints, but I guess they just really like the NFC South. Already the outside is looking really spiky. I'm not really sure what's going on there, but it looks kind of cool. And dropping into the inner bowl, it's looking a little bit crowded in, honestly. This falcon wing here makes me choke more than the Falcons in Super Bowl 51. Looks like they were trying to build a stadium here and then just stop paying attention three quarters of the way through. This part back here is about as dry as their uniforms. But at least they got one thing right. They own that L more than Tom Brady owns them. Overall, not a bad stadium. It looks fairly new, but I feel like they could have done a little better, especially on places like over here. First up, we've got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the New Orleans Saints. So the Saints stadium, I really want to give them the benefit of the doubt because I think there was probably a texture pack or something. But overall, I just think that the Buccaneers had a better stadium in general. It fit in really nice, and they have a pirate ship in their stadium. I mean, who does that? But you know what? It worked out and so Tampa Bay Buccaneers will get the win. Next up we have the Atlanta Falcons versus the Carolina Panthers and so this one honestly it's a pretty easy decision for me. The Panthers had so much wasted potential with their amazing color combo and the Falcons their stadium's really new and so it makes it cool nevertheless so Falcons will get the win.
Now here's something I bet you guys don't actually expect. So the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, their stadium is actually pretty cool, I have to admit. I mean, not only with the pirate ship, but the rest of the stadium fits in well. Meanwhile, the Atlanta Falcons, despite having a brand new stadium, it sort of looks like it's just all crammed together and it doesn't really fit in too well. So I'm actually going to give the win to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So today we're starting out with the Jets Stadium, which is MetLife Stadium. They also share it with the Giants, but oh well. And at first sight, it's not... It's not a great sight. It's all gray, and I guess there's a little texture, but not too much to it. This grayness is making the mood a little bit sadder than Jets fans in January, but, like, who knows? Maybe it looks cool in real life. Honestly, I just don't think it looks that good. Like, I bet the Jets fans had more expectations for this, and they haven't had expectations since 1969. Like, they couldn't even make a good rough draft for a stadium. How could you expect the Jets to draft good quarterbacks? And being completely honest... I genuinely don't know what's worse, the stadium or the green team that plays in it. Second on our list, we have Hard Rock Stadium of the Dolphins. Honestly, it doesn't look like it'd be a horrible time to be spending here. First glimpse, the stadium actually looks a lot like their offense. Like, it probably looked really good back in the 70s, but it's just slowly gotten worse ever since. Here on the inside, you can see up there, there's a big sunroof. And like the Dolphins' defense, it only covers half of what it's supposed to. However, I do like these blue seats. It kind of looks like the crowd would be sitting in an ocean. Except instead of drowning their lungs, it'd be drowning their eyes. Overall, not a horrible stadium, but like, it could be better. Third up, we've got Gillette Stadium of the Patriots. And on first glimpse, it's kind of already looking messier than the Patriots offense without Tom Brady. I guess we'll start our journey by entering through the deflate gate here. On your left, you'll see this little garage, and it's a little low, but as long as you tuck rule your head underneath your shoulders, you should be fine. Walking out on the stadium, we can see around. We can see there's a big tower up there. Good for stealing the Jets' coaching signals, I see. There's a lot of advertisements here, and oh my gosh, do they have their own McDonald's? I mean, it makes sense. They do need something worse than their defense to make them look good. That's one way to do it, I guess. Honestly, the stadium just kind of looks like it's missing a little bit, so I'm not really sure. Nothing special, really. <laughs> and last up, we have New Era Field of the bills which wow on first glimpse is actually looking pretty cool now looking around the inside i actually like how it's really symbolic it's got six lights here for their six afc championship wins and it's got four little booths here for each of their super bowl wins in a row wait hold up i'm, I'm getting word from my agent what they lost four in a row how do you lose four Super Bowls in a row? I've seen Lions with better win ratios than that. Even the Bills record with Tom Brady isn't that bad. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine playing a whole season and making the Super Bowl just to lose? And then you do it again. And then you do it again. And then you do it again. I kind of feel bad now. I think we should just like move on to the ranking. I don't, I don't want to say anything else. I feel like it's kind of bad enough that they lost four Super Bowls in a row. First up on our list, we have the Patriots Gillette Stadium versus the Dolphins Hard Rock Stadium. I thought both of these stadiums were actually kind of the same. However, I do like how the Miami one was all kind of aquatic. I do like that color scheme they got going there. So I'm going to actually have to give it to the Dolphins here on this one. And then after that, we have the New York Jets versus the Bills. So the Jets stadium, it was kind of boring, honestly. Like, maybe if there were lights on it, like in real life, then it would look cooler. But it was just kind of a gray blob in the middle of, like, a deserty area. It kind of reflected their team too much horrible and so it's not really too much competition easy win for the bills there now for the divisional championship we have the dolphins versus the bills so the dolphins see there's that big sunroof that kind of covered the whole thing although it still let half the light through because the sun's never straight up and then the bill stadium it looked really cool obviously everything was kind of even and organized all the colors kind of matched together and it was a big circular stadium. I think it's not too much of a decision, but the Bills have won the AFC East. Okay, so it's not honestly looking horrible with this new texture pack on it, rather than last time when it was a little weird. However, this gray pattern is still looking messier than the Giants' O-line. Not gonna lie, for a stadium this big, these TVs are actually smaller than the Giants' chances of making it to the playoffs. And that's saying something. I mean, there's not even too much to say. It's just kind of gray and dull and... It's not horrible, but at the same time, it's not that great. Especially for having to share a stadium with the Jets. I mean, you're sharing skills with them, but at the same time, you don't have to share the same stadium. Anyway, I'm getting bored of this. Let's move on to the next one. Next up on the list, we have the Great McDonald's Explosion of 1997, aka the Washington Commandos Football Stadium. 
And at first glance, it's not horrible. It's kind of lacking in color. Not sure what these TVs are, but they are shorter than the Commandos postseasons. There's not too much to say. I mean, the stadium's looking about as interesting as the team. And I'm not going to lie, for having been kept in worse condition than their offense, the stadium's actually not looking too bad in Minecraft. Third up on our list, we have the Lincoln Financial Field of the Eagles. And by the looks of it, I'm not surprised it's a financial field. Probably saved a lot of money on this, especially on this roof cover here that covers less than their defense. And I feel like there's not too much going on here. That tower over there is looking about as helpful as Gardner Minshew. And whenever these things are holding up less than Jalen Hurts before the playoffs. In total, this whole section is just looking uglier than the Eagles in 2020. Finally, what most of you who are watching this are probably waiting for. I'm not going to lie, when I got here, the doors for this place were harder to find than the Cowboys in the divisional round. But I found them, they're way over here on the sides, just like Dak Prescott's throws. And voila, we're in the stadium. So the color scheme's not bad, but there's a few things wrong with it in here. First of all, this art over here, like I don't even know what to say, it's looking worse than the Cowboys in the playoffs. And this star down here has definitely seen better days, no wonder it's the Cowboys. And these TVs here are looking about as comfortable as the Cowboys fans when the Cowboys are playing the Packers. And I'm not gonna lie, this stadium really is screaming, the only reason I'm good is because I'm in the NFC East. First up we have the Cowboys versus Washington, and the Cowboys stadium, I mean the outside of it was really iffy and it didn't look too great, but once I got on the inside it was actually a little better and I like the color scheme there. For the Commandos, I did kind of like the maroon and gold, but it's just kind of iffy. It's not too much of an exciting stadium, and so for this round I'm just going to have to go to the Cowboys. After that we have the Eagles versus the Giants. For the Eagles stadium, I did like the color scheme there, it was lacking a little bit of flavor to it because it was just dark green and gray, but it was solid. For the Giants stadium, I, I did like the gray pattern despite it looking a little messy, but in the same way as the Jets, the Giants are going to have to go as well. I did like the Eagle stadium just a tiny bit more. Next up, we have the Cowboys versus the Eagles, and from the outside, the Eagle stadium is a clear winner. However, the Cowboys inside is actually pretty cool with the navy blue and stuff, and so I am actually going to give it to the Cowboys, despite the fact that the outside of their stadium looks like an upside down bathtub. First up, we have Lucas Oil Stadium of the Colts, and already on the outside here, it's looking a little strange. It looks like they maybe tried to make it into like a factory or something. I'm not going to lie, for an NFL stadium, it's not really working out too well. The call for this stadium to be built was about as good as the call for whatever the Colts want to call this play. Falling into the middle, these bars in the stadium are kind of in the way though. They're like thicker than their ex-quarterback's neck. They intercept your vision more than Tracy Porter intercepts the Colts when it matters. Overall, it's just kind of a weird stadium altogether. Next up, we have NRG, aka Not Really Great Stadium of the Texans, named in honor of their coaching staff over the years. And from the outside, it's kind of looking bland, kind of like the Cowboys Stadium, but I guess we'll see the inside, see if it looks any better there. So as I'm walking in here, this gray in the stadium is really in my eye, like it's hurting my eyes to look at more than watching the Texans play. This red stripe here is honestly like the only reason that this stadium isn't horrible. It gives it a little bit of color, you know? And I don't know what's going on with these sidelines here, but they're looking worse than Bill O'Brien's trades. Other than those few things, it's not really the worst stadium, but at the same time, it's not really that special, so... I guess let's just move on. Third up, we have Nissan Stadium of the Tennessee Titans. At first glimpse, it's not the worst stadium we've ever seen, but it's also pretty bland. I'm noticing a trend where each team's stadium kind of reflects their team, and with this one, there's not much to hate, but like, there's also not much to love. And these lights over here are hurting my eyes more than watching the Titans play the Patriots. I mean, 59 to 0, how do you lose that badly? This red stripe down the middle for design, I mean, it looks about as good as an attempt as them trying to win the Super Bowl. So, it's not fitting in too well, but like, it's not a horrible stadium altogether. And last up on our list, we have TIAA Stadium of the Jacksonville Jaguars. And at first glimpse, I don't know what's going on here, they have a lot of practice fields. And this practice field, for one, is already looking better than their regular season record. So they're off to a good start. I'm not sure if these stands here are supposed to look at that, but that hole opening there, it's looking smaller than the Jaguars' chance of making the playoffs this year. Moving on to the actual stadium, it's actually a really big stadium, which is nice. Off of that, I would like to congratulate the Jacksonville Jaguars on being the first team to have twice as many seats as fans. And I just gotta say... Finally, a team that knows how to put in TVs. It's too bad they don't know how to play football alongside that. And one thing that surprised me about the stadium, you see that? 
that's glass right there. I bet inside those rooms it's darker than the Jaguars playoff history. Over here, they actually have pools where people can sit. This thing's so small, it's gonna get dirtier than their bottle gate game. And forget what I said earlier about stadiums reflecting their teams. This stadium is awesome. I'm genuinely surprised that the Jaguars are able to have this. First up, we have the Texans versus the Jaguars. The Texans had an iffy stadium at best. It was kind of bright on the inside. It did kind of hurt my eyes, but it was a solid stadium nevertheless for the Jaguars up next. They had a actually really big and really nice stadium, which is very surprising considering how bad they are as a team. Both these stadiums are pretty solid, but overall, I think the Jacksonville Jaguars just have a nicer stadium altogether than the Texans, and so the Jaguars will get the win there. After that, we have the Titans versus the Colts. The Titans had a pretty solid stadium. There was nothing special about it, but it wasn't a bad stadium. And then the Colts had their nice factory looking stadium, which wasn't a bad look, but it also wasn't the best. Both semi-solid stadiums, but I do like just the Colts. They put a little more detail into it, and it looks like they cared a little more than the Titans. So despite having the giant rafters everywhere, the Colts will get the win there. And then now for the divisional championship, we have the Jaguars versus the Colts. The Colts with their factory stadium did look a little weird. So on this one, it's pretty close. However, the Colts stadium, it didn't have just that feeling that I'd want to watch a game there. However, the Jaguars stadium, I mean, despite how bad the team is, just because their stadium so well, it might not be a bad experience to go and watch one of their games. So with not the most difficult decision in the world, I will give it to the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think altogether, they just had a more solid stadium all around. It looked really nice from the outside, and there wasn't too much to hate about it. And for the first time in recorded history, the Jaguars are actually decent. First up, we have CenturyLink Field of of the Seattle Seahawks and right away this tower here is looking more vibrant than the Seahawks color rush outfits. Moving on to the actual stadium over here, the stands over here are looking darker than the Seahawks moods come to playoffs and I don't know what it is with these birds that they've been making but over here this looks more like a tribute to Toy Story 4 and over here this one's looking worse than their offseason trades. Do I even need to say anything about this one? And even worse after that, wait, wait, wait a minute, are these lines over here made of solid iron? Well, no wonder Pete Carroll passed instead of ran. You wouldn't want to get Marshawn Lynch hurt there. Anyway, enough of that. Moving on, next we have State Farm Stadium of the Cardinals. And immediately I noticed this angry bird out here. Like, I don't even know why it's mad. It's not even the second half of the season yet. And there's only one entrance on this map, and it's literally smaller than the Cardinals' chances of ever making it back to a Super Bowl. And as I'm getting in here, the first thing I'm noticing is this bird here in the middle. It's looking more confused than AJ Green in Week 8. And in the end zones, they put Arizona rather than the Cardinals. In Arizona, it's really just just barely in the end zone. I mean, just like a throwback to Antonio Holmes catching the ball to win the Super Bowl. And I mean, the red zone over here, it's its a cool name, but like, I feel like it'd make more sense if you change the RE to SA. This is just kind of a weird stadium altogether. Third up on the list, we have Levi Stadium of the San Francisco 49ers. And already on the way in, I can see these five flags over here, probably put there as a reminder of their five Super Bowl wins so that they can hold on to the 90s even more than they already are. Right next to those two, you've got the TVs that are more off center than Jimmy Garoppolo's throw. I'm not gonna lie, this little Pepsi symbol over here is carrying the entire stadium. And somehow they managed to get more life up here than they have on the field. And last up, we have SoFi Stadium of the Rams. And I don't remember what I said against the Chargers, but if I said anything about this shape, I'm saying it again. Because this shape is looking wackier than Cooper Cup's hair. And I was about to head into the stadium when I noticed this big space over here that's more open than the design team's minds when they changed the logo. Like, what is this? Their new logo is looking funnier than the Rams' attempt to win the Super Bowl with Jared Goff. I mean, I guess they got Matt Stafford to clear that up last season, but still, either way, I'd be scared to play here because this big screen above our heads is being held together worse than OBJ's limbs. First up, we have the San Francisco 49ers versus the Arizona Cardinals. So the 49ers stadium, it wasn't the best stadium we've ever seen. It's kind of mediocre. Nothing really too special about it other than like their giant building with windows. And the Cardinals stadium, from the outside, it was looking eh. But once you go inside, it's actually looking a lot better. In Minecraft, it's just kind of boring. Not much to it. So I'm going to have to give the win to San Francisco. Next up, we have the Seahawks versus the Rams. The Seahawks had some weird stadium that apparently people love for some reason. I didn't really actually see anything special about it. Like, it had a half roof, I guess. And it was kind of just a mediocre stadium. It looked like it didn't even have that much capacity. But the Rams, despite having the weird glass triangle over it, it did actually look a lot cooler than I expected. Having looked at the charts.
Chargers Stadium. Either way, the Rams will get the win there. There's something about the dark blue that just makes the stadium look better. Anyway, next up we have the 49ers versus the Rams, just like the NFC Championship. And bouncing off of that, the winner is still going to be the same. There's not much to say here. The Rams, they just overall have a better stadium than the 49ers. 49ers were kind of mediocre, but like the Rams just have something special with their huge stadium with a lot of blue lines. Alrighty, first up we have Heinz Field of the Steelers. I get that they partnered with Muster, but they didn't mean you have to make your stadium look like the bottle. And along with that, I mean, look at this bland field right here. They put less effort into this than their logo. And then are these seats down here blue? Yellow and blue. I mean, they picked a color scheme here worse than their playoff win against the Colts. There's not much to see in the stadium, but what I have seen, I wish I hadn't. Second up on our list, we have Paul Brown Stadium. You'd expect of the Browns, but actually it's of the Bengals. And um, for some reason, their stadium is green. I mean, I shouldn't be surprised. Decisions have never really been their strong suit, but I mean, it's just an interesting color scheme. And this is one big stadium. These tiny shaders over here are going to block less than their O-line. I feel like they can make the stadium look really good if they just like use their color scheme and what's this i see down here it looks like they moved their field goals up a touch but that's no surprise if you watch them play the packers man there's so much wasted potential here i guess it doesn't shock me anymore that this is the cheapest stadium in the nfl third up on our list we have first energy stadium home of the no energy team aka the cleaver lynn browns i mean not sure why that r is there but on first glance looking at this color scheme it's no surprise the browns fans don't want to show up to their own games or I guess maybe it's the like one win in two years. But I gotta be honest, solid red is probably still better than their own color scheme. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute. And I thought the Bengals shaders did nothing. Once again, the Browns were just one step behind. And what in tarnation is going on over here? That's looking worse than every part of the Browns team. And last up on our list, what is going on here? Why is the entire stadium purple and white? This looks like what my sister builds out of Legos. Did Walt Disney design this stadium? And what's up with these chairs over here? They're looking spottier than their secondary. I still can't get over the fact that this place looks like a fairy princess castle. Other than this spot down here with these iron bars, I mean, this is probably just for when Wee Hoopin shows up, but what is going on there? Man, I don't even know what to say about this stadium. Ugh. First up, we've got the Steelers versus the Browns, and the Steelers Stadium, I don't even know why it's so famous. I mean, it, I'm not gonna lie, it looks pretty bad. It, it looks like it's one of the cheaper NFL stadiums. I don't know, that's just what I'm guessing. I mean, it's a pretty small stadium, nothing really exciting about it, so Steelers, probably not gonna do too well. But the Browns Stadium, I mean, it was kind of bland being like so solid red and I don't know what was going on with their TVs there but either way I think the Brown Stadium was still just a little bit better than the Steelers so I guess the Browns will move on and then after that we've got the Ravens versus the Bengals and the Bengals Stadium honestly could have been one of the best stadiums in the NFL if they had just made something special with their seats but instead they just made it solid green I think the shape of the stadium is not bad it's just the fact that it's solid green in a stadium that is about a football team that is orange and black so I'm not really sure what's going on there but the Ravens I mean at least they fit their color scheme they had purple everywhere which is an interesting look for Ned Fell Stadium. I mean it's not that bad. I think I'll probably give this one to the Ravens just because I mean it looks a little bit cooler. And now for the winner we will have the Browns versus the Ravens and so the Brown Stadium obviously the big red stadium nothing too exciting except the weird TVs. The Ravens actually had a good color scheme just because the fact that they mixed it up and had some white rather than just having purple everywhere and so I think the Browns were just a little bit more bland and the Ravens were just a little bit above them. So Alright first up we got the drop rubik's cube looking star wars sand people machine home of the minnesota blue devils u.s bank stadium and right away this window up here is only covering like half the roof but i guess when your defense only covers half of what they're supposed to it's just what you get and also these beams here are sagging more than vikings fans shoulders in the playoffs i would make fun of this color scheme here too but i mean if i'd been choking for 50 years straight i think i'd be pretty purple as well and their competition will be the upside down bathtub looking hard hat chin strap looking warehouse home of the dally cowgirls AT&T Stadium and quite honestly I'm pretty surprised they're sponsored by AT&T and not Goodyear because they always seem to be saying they're gonna have a good year and already on the way in this stadium's looking more bland than the Cowboys last 20 seasons and what's up with these two colors of blue down here this looks like stitch either way this is a pretty close battle I would say that the Cowboys interior is a little better but from the outside I mean it's just looking really bland so I'm gonna have to give this one to the Minnesota Vikings after that we've got the Princess Castle looking inner tube Barbie doll house looking winter wonderland home of the Baltimore Wee Hoopins, M&T Bank Stadium. 
And right away, these black lines here are making it look like some little kid got into the permanent markers and drew all over their mom's purse. And these big screens here in the corner are doing less than their quarterback in the Super Bowl. And that's not the worst thing, though. This bird here in the middle is looking meaner than Big Ben when he comes to town. And they'll be up against the swimming pool looking 1990s detective, Bakugan Decca looking Ben Tenring, home in the Buffalo Dilly Bars, New Era Field. And right away, this stadium is looking more generic than the Bills quarterback. And everything here is like really weirdly centered and symmetrical, which is weird because I've I thought they were good at pushing stuff off to the right. And I just gotta say, the view from here is about as good as Dan Carpenter's when he smashes his helmet into his face. And I gotta say, this was also a really close call. I liked how the Ravens had like white outlines around a lot of it, but I also liked the Bills, how it was kind of like really just like a huge bowl and it just worked really well. However, I will have to give this one to the Bills. I think they just have a little bit better of a stadium and I would definitely want to go to one of their games over one of the Ravens. Next up, we have the glitchy roof looking scrap metal, canine tooth looking plane wing, home of the Los Angeles sheep sofi stadium probably a fan favorite but i'm pretty sure the design for this was literally just dropping a ceramic bowl and taking one of the pieces either way it's kind of a weird stadium and this area over here i mean it's not even centered it's looking uglier than the end of the rams regular season last year and by golly gee they probably spent more on this than they spent on their super team either way they'll be up against the undercooked filet mignon looking ruby gemstone batman logo home of the tampa bay tom brady's raymond james stadium and it's kind of a bland stadium this area over here is looking okay but this area over here it's looking sadder than their 0-26 losing streak. And speaking of this area over here, this pirate ship fits in about as well as their original color scheme. Alright, I gotta be honest on this one. This one is not as close to the other two. Raymond James Stadium, it's cool because the pirate ship and everything, but other than that, it's kind of just a bland stadium. There's not much special to it. However, I do like the LA Stadium, and even though it probably costs like $3 billion to make, it's still better than the Raymond James Stadium. That's no question. Let's be honest. We all knew that was gonna happen. And finally, we have our last matchup we got the Beyblade looking Transformer 1980 skate park looking New Jersey Shoreline home of the Jacksonville McJaggers TIAA Bank Stadium and wow they've got more practice stadiums than winning seasons not only that but these TVs here are bigger than their chances of losing more than 10 games this year and they'll be up against the computer mouse looking sushi roll among us character looking magic eight ball Roomba vacuum cleaner home of the Las Vegas Reindeers Allegiant Stadium and this is a huge window right here which would theoretically be good in case of a fire but with the Raiders running game I mean I don't think they can make a window that big and the outside was cool but the seating in here is looking more bland than the Raiders playoff history in the past 20 years and this one is not as tough as the first two but it is actually pretty tough because I hate to knock off the team that I'm going to I liked how the Jaguars had like their huge TV screens probably the only team in the NFL who knows how to implement TVs and the Raiders had a really cool outside but the seating on the inside is a little bland and it kind of ruined the build this one is gonna have to actually go to the Raiders just because it's it's too good to knock off you know like especially with the jaguar stadium even though the jaguar stadium i do like with the tvs it's just not quite up to the standard of the new allegiant stadium anyway guys first up we have the minnesota vikings versus the los angeles rams and the minnesota vikings have a really cool stadium that i definitely want to go check out sometime in real life and it looks cool from the outside has some cool seating on the inside and then the rams also have a very cool stadium which i definitely want to check out sometime in my life and they also have a very good inside and a pretty good outside as well so this is a close one but i have to say if you if you do the math it just kind of adds up the la rams just have a little bit better of a stadium and so this one is gonna have to go to the rams so the rams have won the nfc and for the afc we have the buffalo bills versus the las vegas raiders and the bills honestly i don't know if i would have expected them to make it this far but based on the teams they've matched up against i think they've just had the better stadium on multiple occasions it's a pretty cool stadium and it looks really like modern and kind of bland but it, uh, it kind of works you know and then the Raiders have a really cool stadium from the outside it I mean it does actually really look like a Roomba vacuum cleaner but that's not to say it doesn't look cool the inside could use a little bit more either way this is a pretty close one but I'm gonna have to give it to the Raiders even though the inside is bland they just it's too hard to pass up on a stadium like that especially when it's against just a mediocre good stadium I'm pretty sure everyone saw this coming so this one's a weird one because obviously I had the Raiders beating over the Chargers because the Chargers had an inside that just wasn't quite it however 
the Rams color scheme on the inside of that stadium looks a lot better than the Chargers did. It adds some much needed coloration to it that makes it look just the extra bit better. And so now, even though the Raiders might have a little bit better of an outside to their stadium, the Rams have come out on top. Can't say it's the most surprising thing in the world, and I guess that's the end of this video. So, if you did enjoy this video, please do subscribe and check out my other content. And if you disagreed with my rankings, then tell me down in the comments below, and I will see if you have valid points. And I guess I will see you in the next one. Later!